Good day everyone. We will configure domain controller and Windows failover cluster on Azure IaaS virtual machines in this video. Let's get started. I'm uh, going to execute uh, this particular command on uh, JBSDC for installing Active Directory domain services. So the command that I'm going to use is uh, this one, install Windows feature, any domain services, and I'm uh, including the management tools. Let's press the enter here. So let's wait for it to uh, complete the installation. So right now it is 10%. I will pause the video and then I will uh, resume it once uh, the installation is completed. So the Windows uh, feature uh, installation is uh, completed. So now what I'm going to do is like I'm uh, going to execute this particular command uh, to configure an appropriate domain. So in our case, the uh, domain name would be uh, uh, jbswiki.com. So this is the command. I've put in all the commands in the uh, video description so you guys can also take it and uh, follow the same. So I'm going to press the enter, yeah. So I'm going to set a password uh, here, which will be used uh, while joining other uh, database servers. So it is basically telling like the target server will be configured as a domain controller and restarted when this operation is complete. Do you want to continue with this operation? Yes. So let it uh, uh, run. I, uh, uh, it's going to take like uh, another two or three minutes. So I will pause the video now and then resume it once uh, it is complete. Okay, so the installation is still going on. Okay, so the installation is uh, completed. So uh, a restart has happened automatically. So uh, what we'll do is like we'll wait for uh, the computer to come online and then after that we'll connect to JBSDC. I'm uh, trying to log into JBSDC. It's uh, going to take some time for the first time. Uh, it is, um, uh, please wait, it is basically giving a uh, message that please wait for group policy client. So since it is the first time that I'm logging to the domain controller, it is going to take time. Once it is logged in, uh, I will show you like uh, what account I have uh, used to log in and then I will show you the host name also. Okay, so I've logged into uh, JBSDC. Let's uh, check the host name here. It is uh, JBSDC, so we will ping JBSDC and then uh, see the fully qualified name. So what I'm able to see is like, uh, the fully qualified name FQDN for this server is jbsdc.jbswiki.com. Now what I'll do is like I will uh, show you like the login that I've used to log into the server. So it is uh, no longer uh, jbsdc slash um, the account name. It is domain name jbswiki slash jbvik 2 k one So now what I'm going to do is like I'm going to uh, log into um, uh, database server uh, jbsag1. And then I will try to uh, add that particular um, uh, database server to this particular domain. Okay, so uh, I'm going to log into this particular uh, server using uh, a local account. Yep, I'm uh, logged into the server. So now what I'll do is like I will uh, uh, add this particular uh, server into uh, jbswiki.com domain. So what I'm doing here is like I'm providing the domain name as jbswiki.com 
DNS IP is your um, IP address of your um, uh, DNS server. So in our case, it is uh, JBSDC. So this 172.20.1.4 is uh, JBSDC um, server's IP address. And these are the commands. I've put in all these things in the uh, description. You guys can use it if you're following it. Let's execute that. Let's uh, provide the uh, username and password. So it will be jbswiki slash jbwik2k1. And then let's provide the password. So the changes will take effect after you restart the computer JBSAG1. So it is now added. So what we'll do now is like we will restart this particular uh, um, server. Once the um, server is restarted, I will log in, you know, log into the server uh, using the domain name slash account, and then I will show you if it is added or not. logged into uh, JBSAG1. Uh, let's check if it is uh, using the domain account or the local account. Yep. Host name, JBSAG1. So let me try and who am I? And we are able to see that uh, we are using um, the domain account jbswiki slash account name. So it is pretty clear like we have added the server jbsag1 to the domain. So now what we'll do is like we will try adding uh, jbsag2 uh, to um, the domain too. Let's open the PowerShell. So I'm using the same command. Domain would be jbswiki.com and DNS IP is your JBSDC domain controller server's IP address. So let's execute that. You'll be asking for the credentials. So let's provide that. So once the uh, configuration is completed, it will be requesting for a restart of the server. Yep, it is completed. So let's restart the server. Let's wait for it to come online and then we will log into it. Okay, so JBS AG2 is online now. So let's try connecting to it. Let's gain the credentials password. Yep, we are able to log in now. Let's check the required details. Let's check the host name and also uh, the account used to log into the server. And that will uh, tell us whether we have logged into the server or not. Host name is uh, JVSAG2 and uh, the account used to log in is JVSWiki slash uh, account name. Let's try pinging um, um, JVSAG2 uh, here and look at the FQDN. So the FQDN is JVSAG2, JVSWiki.com. So now what we'll do is like we'll do the same thing for JVSAG3 also. 
let's connect to uh, JBS uh, AG3. Okay, so let's check this server. So we have logged into JBS AG3. Let's uh, add JBS AG3 into the domain. So let's execute this command again. Our domain name is jbswiki.com and then the DNS IP is 172.20.1.4, which is your uh, um, uh, JBS DC domain control server's uh, IP address. So let's execute that. It's going to ask us to provide the credential, required credentials to connect. Let's key in that and then press enter. And once we do this, after the required configuration is done, it will basically be uh, requesting for a restart. So let's uh, do a restart of this uh, server JBS AG3. Okay, so the configuration is completed. It is requesting for a restart. So let's go ahead and do that. Once the server comes online, I will try to log into it and then we'll check it further. Okay, so JBS AG3 is online, so let's connect to it. So I'm keying in the required password. And then let's uh, log into the third database server, which is JBS AG3. So I'm connecting to it. Okay, we are logged in now. Okay, we are in. Let's uh, check the host name. We we'll also do a who am I? And then also ping this particular server. So if we can see here, um, the server name is JBS AG3. Uh, account uses JBS wiki slash account name. And then when I ping the uh, server JBS AG3, the FQDN is JBS AG3.jbswiki.com. So what we'll do now is like we will try connecting to the SQL server on uh, JBS AG1, 2, and 3, and then check that further. Okay, so let's try connecting to uh, JBS AG1 from SSMS. So uh, we're getting a message stating like login failed for user JBS wiki slash JVIC 2K1. So remember when we uh, installed um, the SQL server as part of the um, uh, template, uh, what happened is like it was not um, part of a domain. So it basically installed SQL server using machine name slash um, uh, account name um, uh, account. And that's the reason we are not able to log into it. So what we have to do now is like we need to connect back to each of these uh, database server using um, uh, the um, uh, server name slash um, um, uh, account name and then try connecting to SQL server and then add this account JBS wiki slash JVIC 2K1 as an administrator. So let's do that. So what I'm going to do is like I'm just going to right click on this and then uh, press the shift key in your keyboard and then do a right click on this uh, Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. And then you get an option stating like run as different user. So I just need to do that and then uh, provide the information here as uh, the machine name slash account name. And then uh, type in the password for that particular account. And that way, we will be able to have a SQL Server Management Studio open um, uh, using that account. Maybe uh, I've given the wrong password, but what I remember is like we have uh, uh, provided um, 
uh, provided um, um, uh, the SA account like we have uh, used the SA account so what we'll do is like we will use this SA account and then try connecting to it and then see if we are able to connect to it I think like uh, the SA account is also JVIC 2 k one so let's do that SA account will be disabled so let's do that so this is uh, this comes handy when you have the SQL authentication also enabled so I'm able to see that. So now what I'm going to do is like, I'm going to add a login here called uh, JPS wiki slash JVVIC2K1. That's my Windows account. And then the server roles would be sysadmin. So what I'm going to do is like, I will uh, script it out. And I'm going to execute that in JPS AG1 first. Next on uh, JBS AG2. Yep, let me execute that one too. And then last would be on JBS AG3. Yep, it worked out. Here we have the JBS AG3. So what I'll do is like, I'll create this account as an sysadmin there also. So now we have um, uh, this account for, um, uh, with the domain that is JPS wiki slash um, account name added to each of these um, SQL server instance. So let's try connecting to them. So Windows. If you see here, the account name is JBS wiki slash JVIC 2K1. So let me try connecting to it. I will do the same thing for the other two instances also, just to make sure it is all working. And then the last one would be JBS AG3. Yep, I'm able to connect to uh, all the three uh, uh, SQL server instance without any issue. So if you can see here, it is pretty clear. I'm, uh, able to connect to uh, JBS AG1, AG2, and AG3 using the account JBS wiki slash JVIC 2K1. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Jai Hind.